Traditionally, woodwork in the home is painted in hard-wearing enamel. It can sustain a few knocks without looking too shabby and has a gloss finish. Trim consists of windows, window frames, doors and door frames, and also skirting and picture rails. It's always quite difficult when uh, painting windows, so it's always best to take a little bit of extra effort, especially when you're coming up to the glass, because we have a lot of different surfaces. So you want to try and avoid the paint from actually getting on the glass. So be patient, it's going to take more time than you think. And remember, you probably want to close the windows in the evening for security reasons, so start early in the morning so the paint can dry before the evening arrives. The materials you will need include a drop cloth, bucket, sponge and sugar soap, screwdriver, 25mm or 50mm brush, paint shield, block it painter's tape, sanding block, fine grit sandpaper, steel wool, mineral turpentine, primer if necessary, modo enamel paint, polycell brush cleaner, and don't forget your safety gear, safety glasses, rubber gloves and a dust mask for sanding. Before you start, it's best to lay down a drop cloth to protect your floor. Next, prep your windows and frames with sugar soap, rinsing well and allowing to dry. Remove any fittings or burglar bars. Use a scraper or sandpaper to remove any loose paint. If painting over varnish, it's best to sand as much as possible to bring it down to new wood. Fill any holes with a wood filler available from builders and allow to dry and sand smooth. We've sanded down our wooden frame and now we're going to put on some wood primer first of all. Most importantly, always mask up the areas you don't want to get paint on. I'm also actually using an angled tipped brush so that it keeps my brush edge away from the wall, which is quite a handy tip. If you don't want to mask up, you can actually use a painter's shield. This is quite a handy tool. Just place it in, into position and then away you go. Just move it across. If you do get any paint on your window, let it dry and then you can scrape it off with a window scraper. Continue across the rest of the frame and the windowsill and then allow it to dry thoroughly. Always check the tin for the right instructions for drying and preparation of the surface. When using non-drip gloss enamel paint, make sure you do not mix it. It's designed that you do not shake it up, otherwise this breaks down the compounds of the paint and it loses its non-drip properties. If the paint has separated, just gently stir it once it's all mixed in, stop, and then you can apply your paint. When painting, make sure you use the right size brush. This is a 38mm brush. It's going to allow us to get right in close to the edges and on these thin surfaces. With enamel paint, it's always a good idea to finish on an upstroke. Just allows the paint to settle back down again and all blend in neatly. When it comes to the windows, always apply the paint nearest to the window and then pull away. The last thing you want to do is slip and put a big splatter on the glass. So always pull away. You don't have to put on a thick coat, you can always put on a second coat afterwards. And remember, check the can for to see what the actual drying time is of each particular product that you're using. Be patient and finish off the entire surface. Once it's dry, then you can give it a light sand down and a second coat, and that should be sufficient. If you have casement windows, open them halfway. Protect your glass with tape and mask off the walls around the window. Paint them in the following order. One, crossbars and rebates. Two, top and bottom cross rails. Three, hanging style and hinge edge. Four, meeting style. And finally, five, frame. The brush strokes should follow the construction of the joinery, so vertical brush strokes cut off the horizontal ones. Remove any drips on metal, if you left your fittings on, with steel wool dipped in mineral turpentine. To protect your windows, you can either use blocket masking tape, or you can use petroleum jelly, lip balm to actually run along the edge of the window to stop the paint from sticking to the glass, or you can actually use a painter's shield. But a handy hint is to actually leave a 2mm gap between the glass edge and the surface. That way when you paint, you're actually going to seal those two. It stops any moisture getting in through the cracks. Window frames right next to the glass can suffer from mold. Use a fungicide wash or bleach, one third bleach to water dilution to get rid of the problem. Leave bleach on for 20 minutes and apply more when it dries. 
always wear gloves and safety glasses, then scrub and rinse the surface and prime before painting. To paint a door, door frame or architrave if you have one, the first thing to do is to wash it down with some sugar soap, but make sure you rinse it off well. The next step is to fill in any bumps and any nicks with some filler and sand it down once it's dry. Most importantly, you want to use a 220 grit sandpaper afterwards to get rid of any sheen. Afterwards, then you're going to mask up all the areas so you're not going to get any paint onto your door handles. And at the same time, use a rubber stopper to hold the door open so that you can paint all the other sides and it's not going to rub up against the surface and you're going to rub the paint off. We've primed our door, it's sanded, it's dry and it's now ready for its first coat. Always decant oil-based paints to avoid drying the paint out or allowing debris to fall back into the tin. If you want to paint large areas with enamel, then start at the top and work towards the bottom, moving left to right if you are right-handed. It will feel easier to work this way and you shouldn't get as much paint on your elbow. Paint the door all in one session, otherwise you will see where you took a break. Load the paintbrush, dipping about a third of the bristles into the paint. Paint three vertical strokes next to each other, leaving a gap between them just narrower than the paintbrush width. Without reloading the brush, work the brush horizontally to fill in the gaps and smooth the paint. With the brush almost dry, lightly go over the section with vertical strokes. Stopping on the upward stroke, this is called laying off and will create a good, even look to your paint job. Once you've finished that section, you're going to do exactly the same next side down. Do it straight away while the paint is still wet so you can blend the sections into each other. You can close windows and doors if the paint is touch dry by rubbing talc on the meeting surfaces or putting cling wrap on areas likely to stick. To paint the underside of a door, the best way to do this is to actually use a piece of carpet as your paintbrush. We've loaded up the paint onto the carpet and then we're going to slide it underneath backwards and forward to actually transfer that paint on the underside of the door. When painting a panel door, first paint the inside panels, then the horizontal crossbar at the top. Following the center strut down, painting the center and horizontal cross pieces. Finish the door's outer vertical pieces before painting the frame. Painting skirting should be done after doors and windows. Make sure you vacuum the area first, you don't want to be picking up any dust with your brush, and obviously put down the tape to stop the paint from going onto your other surfaces. When painting and skirting above a fitted carpet, make sure you don't pick up too much paint on your paintbrush, and start painting from the top of the skirting and move slowly towards the carpet edge of the skirting, so to avoid any drips on the carpet. If you need any advice on painting or trim with enamel, go and have a chat to the guys at Builders and they'll be able to help you.